Sometimes expectations that a drug might do can actually cause that effect. And this is something that's called the placebo effect. The idea is that the very act of taking a pill, even when that pill does nothing, can somehow make people feel better because of the expectation that taking a pill will make them feel better. In order to figure out the effects of the placebo effect, and to make sure that the treatment that we're using is actually stronger than the placebo effect, drug studies sometimes include two control groups. These include a no pill group, and a placebo group. In the no-pill group, participants get nothing, and in the placebo group, they get a pill that's made with an inactive ingredient. So it's clear that expectations that participants have about the study can have an effect, which is why, as a general rule, participants are never told what condition they are in. And not only do they not know if they are in a control group or an experimental group, they won't even know what experimental group they're in if there are multiple levels. And this makes a lot of sense if you think about it. If someone knew that they were in a placebo group, they would know that they weren't getting any medicine, and so they wouldn't show the placebo effect. Studies that have experimental groups, and placebo groups, and no-pill groups, and the participants have been randomly put into all the different groups and don't know what groups they're in, this is referred to as a single blind study. So it's clear that participant expectations can have an effect on study outcomes. But it turns out that the expectation of the experimenter can also have unintentional effects. And you might ask, how? How could this be? Let's say that I'm the one running the study, and I have a clear expectation that the drug that we're testing is going to help migraine sufferers have less severe migraines. Well, if someone comes in and I know that they're in the experimental group, I may unintentionally bias their responses. Maybe I would spend just a little more time asking them about how much better they were feeling, or maybe I would accidentally look disappointed when they said that they weren't feeling better. The participant might pick up on these subtle clues, and that could actually influence their responses. Or maybe the participant doesn't pick up on it, but my knowledge about what groups people are in might influence what I hear or how I interpret what the patients are saying. Like I might remember the comments about how good someone in the experimental group was feeling, but maybe I accidentally didn't attend as much to the other comments that could have indicated the opposite. In order to avoid this experimenter bias, many studies are set up such that neither the patients nor the experimenter know what groups people are in. And this is referred to as double-blind studies. So to quickly review, in single-blind studies, the participants are not aware which group they're in, and this helps to ensure that the people in the placebo group will show the placebo effect. And double-blind studies have that same setup, but in addition to that, in double-blind studies, the experimenter has no idea what group the participants are in either.